happy uh, to welcome back the sixth fastest woman in the history of the event from the United States. Please welcome Shakari Richardson. Before Saturday's highly anticipated women's 100 meter clash at the Eugene Diamond League, Shakari Richardson was, well, let's say, her usual self. Two of the women sitting here are two of the fastest women to ever do this sport, so I'm honored to just be on the stage with them, but I'm not starstruck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This story has been all the rage since Saturday afternoon when the race was run off and Elaine Thompson Hero with that magnificent 10.54 clocking, second fastest time in the history of women's sprinting. Only Florence Griffith Joyner's 10.49 world record has been faster than that run. And, you know, there was a time not too long ago that 10.49 looked out of reach for all of the ladies in track and field. But suddenly, and I must credit you, Mariah, because for the past couple of weeks, you were uh, talking about the possibility. I wrote and, about it. And, too. And, and, and many people were saying, including myself, that uh, that may be a little bit uh, far-fetched. But uh, certainly on the strength of what we have seen from uh, Elaine Thompson, first of all in Tokyo, and then on Saturday afternoon, 10.49 might not be too far off for her. No, now. at all. And what we've seen from Elaine Thompson here uh, is she's at her best. And Lance, you know, to underestimate her would be to be tricking yourself because um, even in her post-match interview, she spoke about, you know, she's not going to get sidetracked. She has another mission that she's working on. And I get the sense that Elaine is not going to stop until she proves to the world that 10.49 is what she can break. And I see her doing that. And I think the style in which she keeps getting better and better and better, because coming off an Olympic performance, you know, people would expect that, okay, she would win, but not in such a manner. But she shows that, us that there's no slowing down for her. Yeah, 10.54, a, an absolutely amazing run by her. She looked so invincible at 50 meters. She was in control of the race. Once she took then, off. And then she accelerated and, and just blew the entire field away. And when you can defeat someone of the quality of Shelley and Fraser Price in the manner that she did, tells you that Elaine Thompson, he rides in very, very special form at the moment. Um, Shakiri Richardson had a lot to say after the race. I, I must say she, she took the defeat with a smile and continuously spoke about no excuses and so on. But it must have been very damaging to her ego and her, and her pride that she would not only have been beaten, but beaten in such an embarrassing way. Exactly. And when I listened to Shakiri, it the words and the manner in which she delivers these responses, you can tell it's coming from a place of hurt. You know, when somebody, you know, you've said so many different things, you've literally, the, I think the difference with Shakari and the other athletes is that she's put herself out for public scrutiny. The fact that she tweets and she responds and she actually gets into these battles with the fans, Lance, it's why it hurts so much. The girl didn't even come fourth, you know. She actually came last, which is, very stinging. Yes, it was a, a crushing loss for her. I think we have Oba Dele now on the line to talk to us. Oba, are you hearing, hearing us now or can we hear you? Let me say that first. Yes, sorry okay. about that mix up. Okay, great. But I'm here. Yeah, well, uh, continue with your, your response because I think you heard my question. Your uh, overall assessment, not only of uh, Tom Sahira's outstanding run, but uh, Shakiri's failure in the race. Right, and I think you all have made a lot of valid points. There was a lot of excitement uh, and anticipation for this particular event. And I was a little bit concerned because to be, Richardson hasn't raced in two months and to be gone from an event hundred meters, which requires you to be very sharp for that long, it could have gone many ways and we saw how it went. And I think something that's really important is to remember that athlete, you become a celebrity, but performance always matters. And in the case of Richardson, because of her particular situation, failing has because of her marijuana ban, having to sit out the Olympics, she became a celebrity that exceeded her performances. And so when you come up against athletes like the likes of Olympian, Shell Sharika, and, and they're coming in there to do something, it's, it's quite clear this team is running with a mission and she's accomplishing that mission. When you think of the fact that she disposed of the full hand and, and Shellyann is having an outstanding year, she's already run 10.74 or faster five times this season in the 63, and still Elaine is miles beyond them. So 
a lot of attention has been paid toward the event because of Richardson, but let's be honest, Richardson is simply not in the class that Elaine is operating at and no one is there. And we saw once again confirmation of what happened on the podium in Tokyo, Jamaica one, two, three. Yeah, um, I'm having still some slight issues with Oba's audio, but uh, Elaine thompson Hira understandably, understandably thrilled with her victory on Saturday, her 10.54 clocking. She broke that record and she was 29 as well. So I was a young girl growing up hearing about Flo Jo, not knowing that I would be in that in that moment doing this right now. So for me to come out here and run, I ran like four PBs in one month <laughs> or three PBs in one month is amazing. It tells that I'm really working hard and the target is not really far, but it takes time and patience. I'm just taking it race by race and step by step. It's a tiring season. So after the championship, I think I will not um, deliver that much, but I mean, God is on my side. He's, he has my back, so I'm just faithful and humble at the same time. Where's that little bit of time that you need? Is it in the start, in the finish, in the middle somewhere? Where's the, where's those that, that world record? Um, I have to watch the, those races back and to see what can be fixed. I don't think nothing much, but but that perfect day, I guess. Yeah, so um, uh, understandable response there from uh, uh, Elaine thompson Hira on the outstanding run that she had. Um, uh, Oba, before we talk a little bit more about Shakira's um, dismal performance, uh, assess for me Elaine thompson Hira's performance here, because as I was saying to Mariah earlier on, most track and field experts considered the 1049 world record by Flojo out of reach for any of the current athletes, but um, somehow it is it is beginning to look possible, is it? It absolutely is looking possible. And I was one of those people who would have considered it far beyond the reach of any of the current crop of athletes. And what has happened in the last couple of years, perhaps is the, the fact of technology and, and uh, the fact that there are improved training methods and faster tracks and everything coming together. And then you put together races where they are some of the best and fastest women of all time competing together. And then you add this extra thing where there's a newcomer who seems not to respect what the, the veterans have done. I think it's, it's created like a cauldron, uh, an environment where now Elaine is showing that she is indeed a cut above everyone else. From a technical point of view, what she's doing in terms of being able to get into her race earlier and then maintain that all the way down. It's something that we really have not been able, we really have not seen her do in the last couple of years. She proved it in pretty much all of her, her races ab, after the Jamaica trials where she came third. She's been on an incredible tear, an incredible tear that's unlike anything we've seen before. Oba, do you see Shakari recovering from the um, what we would like to term an embarrassing performance over the weekend? Yeah, I'm not sure if she'll do it this season. Again, she is way short, and any time that she lines up, she will be the target. She has put a bullseye on her back. She has not shown the type of deference toward people who have accomplished much more in the industry and game that she is now in. And I think people take that personally. In, in the future, I think she'll be able to recover. Let's remember, she is the sixth fastest woman of all time. She's run under 1080 three, four times in her lifetime and three times a season. She's only 21 years. So I think she will be fine. But for right now, there's a clear distance between her, the Shakira Richardson's that we see right now, and the rest of the world, particularly the Jamaican athletes. Yeah, and of course, when we opened the segment, uh, we showed a sound bite of Shakira, you know, talking about going back to the lab over. How did you interpret that comment? And would it make, um, of course, the people regulating track and field feel a bit uncomfortable? I heard the comment at first. My antenna went up like, okay, this is not the, the best use of words. But there's an anti-doping system in place where they test people. I think when you look at the totality of her speaking, the way that she expresses herself, she's an emotional person. Her vocabulary isn't the widest and, and, and deepest. Indeed, when you look at the fact that she swore on national US TV and basically which was broadcast all around the world shows that she's an emotional person. So I don't read too much into that. And 
I give her the benefit of the doubt that it's a uh, figure of speech like going back to lab could be going back to the drawing board or going back to basics. Yeah. So let's hope it's just that. But, you know, there's already a system in place uh, with a whereabouts system to, to do the testing of athletes randomly and, and even in competition. Yeah. Oba, you mentioned earlier on that you don't think her rebound will be will be complete this year because she apparently based on the her, her what the time she would have lost in, in competing and so on would need more time. So maybe next year. But she did say in a post race interview that she will run again before the season ends yeah. because she cannot afford to end the season the way she did on on Saturday. Um, what would be her best efforts, you think? Um, in sort of redeeming her 2021 season? As part of the end of the question, could you repeat it? For yeah, I, I, yeah I, was, I was saying that she said that she cannot afford to end the season in the way she ran on Saturday. So she will run again before the season is out. You suggested earlier on, Oba, that um, maybe next year would be her a better platform to rebound. Uh, what can she recover for the remaining weeks in this season? I think it's important for her to try to get to sub-11 again and to make off some of the scalps around the world. Right now, she is the best American by miles, but she has not proved against the best in the world. She had Gateshead earlier this year, which weren't great, where Asha Smith at, and she did take some scalps this against versus their disdain. Yeah, um, Oba, always great talking to you and, and we'll be in touch. Not too much longer left in this uh, track and field season, just uh, maybe two or three weeks of the Brussels meet and I think one after that uh, to close off the season in mid-September. But we'll be in touch. My pleasure. All yeah, the best. And, and Mariah, Oba said something very important there when I was listening to him about uh, Shakira Richardson not showing any deference and, and, and respect to athletes who have been there, done True. that, and, and, and perfor performed great deeds so far. And um, a suggestion from him that, you know, maybe she could tone down a bit and start getting her performances on the track. Yeah, I just think the people that are advising her, because she keeps talking about having but people is, in her is corner. Is she someone who appears to take advice? Though? Well, like, I'm just going by what she said in the press conference. She spoke about, you know, people in her corner yes, and people yes. rooting for her. Yes. So maybe they should have a conversation with her because, you know, it doesn't look good when you lose like that and then you've said the most. Mm. Yeah, okay. Shakira Richardson last in the Eugene Diamond League event. And uh, she, we had the big effort from Elaine Thompson. He was 10.54 seconds, just five hundredths of a second outside Flo Joe's 1988 world record of 10.49. Still some more track and field to discuss here on the all-new Sportsmax Zone. Back in a moment. <laughs> 